Welcome back to the Blemings Labs room. Uh, we've got a, a fantastic presentation coming up. I've got, uh, it's my great pleasure to introduce Vadim Tlitinsky. Uh, Vadim's going to be chatting to us about an introduction to Vercadia, an open source desktop and VR metaverse. Uh, please, as usual, post your questions into the uh, Venulus um, channel uh, for this for this um, for this room, and uh, if you wouldn't mind adding hash question uh, just to the to the question, just to make it easy for our moderators to pick up and route through to us. So, just quickly to introduce Vidim. Uh, he's a software developer, mostly self-taught. He's been writing code since he was a young teen, uh, like many of us. Uh, he's currently works on the Linux-based desktop virtualization solution based on NX and Perl. But as a hobby, he's on the core team of Vicadia, uh, an open source VR environment. Um, Vadim, welcome, and I'll hand over to you and looking forward to the chat. Thank you. Thank you. OK, so <coughs> hello, I'm Vadim. So, <coughs> So just in case you're wondering, I'm originally Russian, but I live in Spain these days. Uh, so, <clears throat> and yeah, as uh, <clears throat> she helpfully said, uh, this is a personal project of mine, so it's nothing that my employer has anything to do with. Anyway, let's get, st uh, let's get uh, started. <clears throat> so I'm a software developer and systems administrator. I've done both things. I'm mostly focused on Linux and open, open source <coughs> and free software. I work in desktop virtualization. And I have many hobbies, really, but <coughs> yeah, including even things like electronics. And, and this will become relevant soon enough. I joined Second Life about 15 years ago. That was pretty shortly after its creation. I was one of the first third-party viewer developers. So just in case you don't know what's that about, uh, Second Life used to be closed source. But after uh, a while, it got official Linux support and actually released the source code for the client. And I was one of the first people experimenting with that kind of thing. But <clears throat> eventually, it got a bit too li limiting. And I started looking for other things looking for something better. And I ended up uh, as a member of the Vercadia core team. So what is this about? Uh, so, <clears throat> right. so my motivation for this talk is that I'm a frequent uh, reader of Linux Weekly News. And I saw there uh, your announcement for a uh, call for sessions. And the question was, what's next? So in this time of change, <clears throat> what, how can open source uh, play a role in creating, helping, and adapting, adapting to this change? So I think uh, our project is quite relevant in this area. So I decided to try to tell you about it. All right, so we use the word metaverse to describe this. So it's a word that was coined by Neil Stephenson in <coughs> Snow Crash. And basically, we mean a shared virtual space in which people can do pretty much anything. Uh, <coughs> so uh, a quick kind of uh, condensation of what we mean here is a 3D environment with optional VR support, including on Linux. But uh, wait, that is so good. It's multi-user. It can be modified at runtime. It can be scripted. It has a web-like architecture. What do we mean by that? Well, it doesn't have a central server to it. Uh, it's pretty, uh, you can think of it as a pretty much like a 3D Apache server. So mm, it uh, has worlds, like Apache ser my, my serf pages. It, uh, you can set up it uh, on your own set machine at home, for instance. I don't, uh, you don't need to be part of any kind of central service. So you do your own thing, all you want. For any hardware, you might own. And it's Apache 2.0 licensed. OK. <clears throat> now, what is it like? So I had a bit of trouble with uh, videos in uh, LibreOffice, unfortunately. So I'm just going to open it separately. 
And give me a sec. So here's a demonstration from uh, one of our uh, very helpful community users and developers. Uh, unfortunately, I got into VR uh, early on, and so I'm kind of stuck with Oculus, and we just don't actually support it on Linux. We do support Steam VR, so that's. Uh... <clears throat> So here's a short demonstration of what a good God. Oops. Well, that wasn't expected. Give me a second. I'll try to rectify. Okay. Here we go. So here's a demonstration of it being launched uh, from a Linux desktop. And this is going to show you what the interface looks like. Here's it loading, it takes a little bit of time. So, as can, you can see, we have a 3D environment. We have pretty a uh, pretty nice render, including features like mirrors. And now uh, we're going to switch into VR. This is on, on Linux, of course. Uh, there's a bit of a lighting issue uh, on <clears throat> on some video cards currently, but well, it's st still usable. So. Here now the user is in VR. It's, they're putting on their headset. Like you can see we have body tracking. And we even have support for full body tracking, so you can also keep track of the legs if you ha have the hardware for that kind of thing. Uh, this is the VR interface. <clears throat> okay, so I th suppose that will do for now. Now I'm actually going to try uh, to risk a live de demonstration. Okay, so here I have it actually running on my desktop. Okay, so this is the desktop version of our environment. Uh, <clears throat> I got a special avatar made for this occasion. Take a, uh, some of you, uh, some of the people here might actually know what it's a reference to. <laughs> okay, so it's a, it's actually a pretty funny avatar to demonstrate some of our features, like for instance, we have flexible body parts. Okay, so here we have a 3D environment. We can move around it. We have surfaces like whiteboards, for instance. Uh, let me see if I can, yeah, I can draw on this. And this also works in VR, by the way. We can create and modify objects in <clears throat> uh, at runtime. You would have to use any kind of uh, special editor. Uh, give me a sec, sorry. Okay. Okay, let's see. So for instance, let's go take a sample model. Uh, just let's get the link from here, copy link location. Okay, so here's our creation mode. And we're going to create a model. Just enter the URL, create. Uh, we can just exit, create mode, and there we go. We have a model in the world. 
so as you can see, uh, things <coughs> work by referencing external assets. Everything is just downloaded from HTTP. So all of this around us is just comes from a web server somewhere, usually Amazon S3. Okay. Now we have uh, some interesting and advanced features. Let me uh, try to show you. So let's look for a room. I'm going to turn sound on. should be able to notice. Okay, let me see. We can actually mod modify uh, yeah, uh, the characteristics of our sound depending on your location. So for instance, if you want to, to have a private room, we can do that. And for the last of our demonstrations, let's go to, uh, okay, this is not good. Why is it doing that now? Huh, I guess something is, uh, is a bit wonky today. Okay, we're going to go to Community Village to demonstrate a particular yeah, part of our system. Let's see. It takes a little bit long, okay. Let's see, where was this? I need this particular place in here. Ah, there it is. So check this out. We, we have a feature which we call, uh, still loading, I think, which we call zones. So what they allow us to do is to modi modify different settings of the world depending on whether you are in a zone or not. So for instance, let's just walk into here. Okay. And once we're inside, check out what happens. Now the ambient is completely different. I think it's pretty nice, isn't it? Anyway, let's get back to the presentation. Uh, okay, so what can you do with this thing? We can so socialize. It's a good uh, uh, free chat. We can have meetings. It's very well built for that kind of thing. We use it for our, our regular meetings in world, uh, which we hold regularly. And you can make simple games with it. It's of course, it won't compete with a dedicated gaming engine, but uh, you can do quite complex things with it. For instance, you can certainly make an RPG with it. It might not be the most ideal or comfortable thing, but you can do it. And we can host events in it, uh, like conventions, for instance. Not really anything you want. We don't restrict what you do with it. It's yours to do whatever you want with it. Okay, so here's a question. Where did this came come from? Like uh, you're probably wondering, why didn't, haven't I heard of this uh, before? So we have to thank, apologies. Mm -hmm. So we have to thank this man for a lot of uh, this. This is Philip Rosedale, uh, a man of remarkable fashion sense. He's, he used to be the CTO at Real Networks uh, about uh, 20 years ago. And uh, he started his own company. And in, in our field, he's kind of our, for instance, Linus Torvalds or uh, John Carmack. He's just the uh, 
really uh, the big celebrity in the field. Uh, of course, there were many other amazing people involved, but he is kind of the main one with uh, people think uh, about in this particular area. So uh, let's uh, go through the a short history. Uh, somewhere in 1999, Philip Rosdale founded Linden Research, and Linden Research wanted to do uh, VR hardware. This was uh, <clears throat> a very early effort, and uh, quickly, uh, Linden Research realized that they had to make software uh, to go with it. And the software became Second Life, eventually. And, uh, the hardware well, didn't really go anywhere. And it's currently been abandoned. Uh, Second Life uh, went on for quite a, quite a while, until Philip stepped down in 2010. And he launched a new co company called Coffee and Power. Uh, shortly afterwards, uh, Palmer Lucky launched the Oculus Rift Kickstarter. <clears throat> this was actually what uh, started the current uh, VR revolution. And I uh, joined this Kickstarter among uh, many other people. Uh, in around at the same time, we find the first commits in the repository. So they <coughs> now uh, we know part two. In 2013, Philip Rosdale founded a company called High Fidelity, and High Fidelity produced what uh, you've just seen. That that's. Uh, that was the, uh, a commercial project originally made by a, by a company. Uh, in 2016, we have the Oculus Rift CV1. Uh, and despite trying pretty hard, high fidelity uh, didn't really have a, any commercial success. And, uh, first, they tried to focus on remote working teams. Uh, but that didn't work either. So in December 2019, they just announced they were going to shut down entirely the, the project. The company still exists. And we began, <coughs> began what uh, was originally known as Project Athena. And this was what became Vercadia later. Uh, High Fidelity completely shut down in January. And uh, we rebranded in February. And in May 2020, the company came up with a new high fidelity, which has the same name, but it's completely different, which is weird and confusing. But there you go. <coughs> OK. And in October 2020 was when the Hi Fi Metaverse server shut down, which was the last. Uh, part of the old high fidelity infrastructure. After that, we're completely on our own. So, summing so up, Vercadia is an open source uh, continuation of high fidelity uh, dead commercial project. It uh, has an old eight year old code base that unfortunately not many people heard about. Uh, there are about 84 thousand commits and 400,000 lines of code in it. It was developed by a company with 70 employees and about 70 million investment. And now it's being worked on by a group of volunteers. Now, at this point, a uh, logical question is, what went wrong with it? Like, uh, they, they spent a lot of time, a lot of money. Why did it die? Well, we have, um, I, th I think there are two ways of seeing it. One is that they made the wrong product. Uh, High Fidelity tried to basically sell virtual content. The problem is that the very structure of it completely horrifies every, every virtual uh, content maker I've ever spoken, spoken to. It's made to be highly dis distributed, highly uncontrollable, uh, you can't really protect any uh, kind of co contact, 
uh, content in our architecture. Everything is up for grabs. You can uh, copy anything with a click. And it's basically uh, built around that kind of model. <coughs> or uh, the other way of seeing it is that they choose chose the wrong business model. So they should have been an open source company, just sell support, uh, maybe collect donations and just ignore the entire content uh, creation side of things. So basically that's kind of our, <clears throat> our view of, of it. It was a perfectly good software project. It just didn't work for them business-wise. Yeah. What is the technology like? Well, I think it's very exciting. So here we have a diagram uh, courtesy of Fire Fidelity, where we can see what it's like. Uh, the domain server is what binds the other services. And on top of that, we have what we call mixers. Those combine uh, different data streams. So for instance, the avatar mixer is what uh, <clears throat> uh, lets people see each other. The message mixer passes messages around. The asset server can act as a little uh, embedded web server. The audio mixer uh, combines audio and the entity server is what uh, manages the objects. All of these are heavily multi-threaded and can be hosted on different machines. So you can actually run a single environment on seven servers if you want to. This makes it uh, quite uh, very highly scalable. So let's see more about the technology. It's a fully distributed, scalable virtual world. It supports Oculus Rift, SteamVR, and Windows MR. We have positional audio, so you can hear where people are. It runs on Windows, Linux, and Mac. It has extremely experimental support for Android and Oculus Quest. Uh, this isn't quite working yet but it can't be made working in principle. It's written in C++, Qt5, and a lot of JavaScript. Everything can be scripted in JavaScript, uh, including on the client side, on the server side, and the interface. So if you've seen a little bit of the interface, all of that is JavaScript calling down to the internal API. So you can rearrange the entire interface if you want to, without getting down to the C++ code. Uh, the code has a highly modular architecture uh, built in, into uh, <clears throat> multiple libraries. Major parts are highly abstracted. So for instance, you could replace the rendering engine or the physics engine without that much effort. It's quite modern C++, C++ 14. Mm, so if anybody who's watching this talk has ever worked on Second Life, well, that code is pretty crusty. This isn't like that. It's quite pleasant to work with. It's heavily multi-threaded, so it works great on modern hardware and it's portable. Our rendering engine is custom. It supports many nice features and supports different versions of OpenGL and mobile OpenGL. The audio engine supports positional audio, audio zones. Uh, you can define uh, different audio settings, like you can broadcast speech to an entire region, or you could uh, create private areas, things like that. It can negotiate compression, not a, a huge feature, but useful. And it even has MIDI support because this platform was originally made for events, including musicians. We have ex very good audio support here. Uh, uh, streaming support. Okay. Uh, scripting engine. It uh, <laughs> works on JavaScript. It's based on Qt script, which is unfortunately deprecated, so it ha will have to be replaced. We've already done some work on evaluating that. It has access to pretty much everything. 
it's easy to expand and it's available everywhere. Uh, physics engine is based on Bullet, which is open source, and it has the interesting characteristic of being automatically distributed. What this means is that it, uh, the server actually asks clients to compute physics for it. It's kind of an interesting approach. Now, <clears throat> now uh, let's talk a little bit about our team. So uh, we have uh, Pedro, uh, Kalila as our project leader, who is a bit shy. Uh, and the core team consisting of David Rowe and myself. Uh, uh, our main team just mostly deals with things like moderation, management, keeping up the main website, uh, mostly a bunch, bunch of management. And of course, we also do development ourselves but we are not the exclusive drivers of the project. We also have many co contributors who exert a lot of influence on how our project works. Uh, okay, so our first year was kind of unnerving because well, when everything died, we had to figure out what to do. So a lot of time was spent on planning, team building, backing up, setting up infrastructure, setting up processes like uh, builds, branding, community management, and of course, development. But still, I think we've made very good headway. And we've even managed to hold commercial, commercial events. Uh, so to clarify here, we're not actually a company. So Vericadia is not, uh, not, not an actual company because we've got people all around the globe and that's kind of challenging, but we do have many people who are contractors and long-term users of the old system that are available for, for hire. And we can certainly discuss things like content creation or hosting events. <coughs> see. Uh, so a bit of our work, we've merged 352 PRs. This is as our project, uh, I mean, the open source one, closed uh, about around 200 issues and made uh, hundred and uh, more than a thousand commits. A little bit of our organization. We hold regular in-world meetings. We have two development meetings per week, a weekly community meeting, a weekly business users meeting, and we also host gaming and other social events. Uh, we mostly organize on Discord, and we also do uh, <coughs> code reviews and uh, QA for the contributions. So uh, let's see what, what we've got done in the time we existed. Well, we've improved Linux support, the UI, the renderer, the audio mixer, uh, Steam VR support. We've improved monitoring. Uh, GLTF support, which is an open format for graphics and models. Uh, we've made improvements to the zone uh, system, uh, crash reporting, uh, the uh, creating, creation interface, the metaverse server, which is what does accounts. By the way, user accounts are optional. You don't have to register anywhere if you don't want to, but it exists and it can be used authentication and many more things. <clears throat> we also uh, hosted multiple events. Uh, Startup Asia, Indian World, which is Cirque uh, uh, Asia, which is a dental exposition actually, uh, Startup Festa and more are coming. Those are actual commercial uh, events, which uh, uh, <clears throat> we, uh, about which we have more information available on our website. So, what are our plans for the future? We need to upgrade Qt uh, to the latest stable version. This is uh, not a huge job, but it has to be done. <coughs> uh, a much bigger one is uh, the scripting engine because we're 
using Qt script, which is currently deprecated, unfortunately. So we'll have to figure out a replacement for that. Uh, uh, another uh, big part <coughs> thing we need right now is to improve audio encoding. Uh, here's an actual uh, one of the things, the only thing that was closed source in the uh, project that High Fidelity originally made was the audio encoder. And it's something very particular. It somehow manages to shrink sound uh, audio to one fourth of its original size uh, very quickly and with, with very high quality. So we've had to stop using that since it's theirs. And we're now using Opus. Opus is a very good codec, but unfortunately it's much slower than what we have. So uh, dear friends at xif.org, if you have any kind of ideas for a very fast audio codec, well, we'd love to use it. <clears throat> uh, we also uh, are doing some work on trying to uh, have good support for the Android and the Quest, which will take a lot of work. It compiles currently, but it needs uh, optimization and it's going to need uh, <coughs> special handling for uh, lower quality assets. <coughs> that those systems can handle. And screen sharing is uh, still uh, currently exists, but it's kind of clunky. So we've also are considering doing improvements in that area. And of course, uh, this is a system that needs content. We need stuff, avatars, uh, chairs, environments, pretty much anything. And <clears throat> unfortunately, uh, this is an area in which this kind of architecture is kind of uh, has some weaknesses in that since we don't have any kind of centralized infrastructure like for instance second life does when people leave uh, often, often their stuff disappears along with them so we're kind of quite vulnerable unfortunately to losing good work uh, by people so this is an area in which we hope to make serious uh, big improvements Okay, so uh, we're looking for people uh, of all kinds. So please join, so, so, so please take a look at what we have and come to our Discord and join our events. We, we want pretty much everybody, developers, artists, testers, and just uh, friendly people who want to hang out and chat and uh, <coughs> socialize. Right, so uh, this, uh, unfortunately, there's a lot of to speak about and uh, uh, I didn't really have uh, time to get deeply into any kind of technical matter, but fortunately, I am going to have a uh, talk at FOSDEM in just a bit more, a uh, couple of weeks. Uh, this one is uh, free attendance, so, <clears throat> and it's going to be a, of a technical kind where I'm going to explain how uh, you uh, use the creation interface, how to write simple scripts and how to host a server. It, uh, it's intended to be a way to show people how to get started with development in Vercadia. Uh, we have a useful, a nice calendar on our website. Uh, oh wait, no, sorry. Anyway, you have here the dates for the events in different time zones. Uh, that's right, I suppose I have time for questions. Thank you so much for um, a really great talk. Uh, what we might do is we've got a few questions from the crowd, so I'm going to take you through a few. I might just kick off though with a um, with a high level question. So, with augmented reality, for instance, and virtual reality, but particularly AR, 
um, there there's been this this war, if you like, between web based AR and app based <clears throat> AR. It sounds like this is actually a third category because it's not. It's not just a pure app base because you've got the distributed network of servers, um, but it's certainly not web based because you're not using web as your as your delivery mechanism. It's an app based delivery mechanism. Mm. Mechanism is that right? It's kind of like this third category. Um, well, it's mostly uh, it's mostly app based, I would say, but uh, we definitely have been talking a lot about uh, web VR and uh, thinking about if we might uh, be able to do some sort of implementation there, you, even if simplified. And there have been people interested in, for instance, even uh, perhaps even foregoing any kind of 3D and just um, connecting to the system uh, with audio functionality. We mainly use audio to communicate in the world. So perhaps you could just join and uh, just use it like you would uh, Discord or Zoom or any other mm. audio application. This, of course, would be sacrificing some functionality, but it could be a first approach to get people uh, on mobile devices easier in, into this, for instance. Mm. And it'll be easy to run those two UIs mm -hmm. um, simultaneously. So that's pretty cool. So some more questions from the audience. Um, so we've got a few. Um, first of all, um, is the is LSL the scripting language supported? Nope. Nope. No, it's uh, JavaScript. Yep, no worries. How many users can you have in a region? Well, that depends a lot of, uh, on the hardware. So the original company tested uh, the system to about 500 people in the same region. Uh, we unfortunately can't go that high because we had to drop the, their proprietary codec. Uh, but uh, we can go pretty high. So for instance, 20, 30 people per region is very easily doable, and we can probably go a good deal higher than that with a bit of effort. Uh, but it would take a little bit of planning on on our uh, And we've also considered in doing some improvements to audio encoding, different uh, trying different codecs to, to solve that problem. We could exchange uh, bandwidth for encoding performance and get more people that way. Um, <clears throat> okay, wonderful. Uh, Which? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, sorry, I got lost, lost my tree. Yeah. Okay, no worries. Which hmm. third-party viewer did you work on? This is a question from the start of your talk. Uh, it's uh, it, it's uh, it's ancient. It used no. to be the Dale Glass uh, sir, uh, viewer. So yeah, I remember uh, that. In, yeah, in case you're wondering, that uh, was my username uh, in Second Life. Since you have to choose a last name, so I have a username that's kind of like a, a real name. <laughs> okay, a uh, question from Darren. Um, is it possible to share access? I think you've answered this, access to an application desktop environment with other people. I think you've answered that. Um, Morgan Lee also asks, can you make inventory distributed? So uh, we don't actually have an inventory as such currently. Well, I mean, we have an application um, by uh, written by our, our founder, which kind of serves like an inventory, uh, but not in the sense that Second Life has it, for, for instance, just yet. Uh, it's, this is an area of work. That's actually kind of made more complicated by our distributed nature. There is no mm. central service. Uh, you certainly can store things locally, like in the uh, interfaces configuration file, but that's not going to follow you around. And we yeah. have an optional uh, authentication server, which could be used to, for instance, store small amounts of data for the user. Uh, this is an optional, actually, service. Like you don't have to be authenticated. You can just be completely anonymous and still get access to the system if people allow you anonymous access. Okay, so you can make things um, in your server for other people to browse, but but it's but how would you actually then collaborate on making something with other people? Well, it's uh, pretty much our assets are just hosted on a web server somewhere. Amazon mm -hmm. S3 is very popular, so uh, yeah, uh, collaborative content here. Uh, well, you can just work in world. For instance, you can create objects. Let me show you. Uh, okay, let me get out of here. 
Okay, so for instance, here let's uh, create and let's shape. And oh, there's a box. <laughs> so yeah, and uh, let's change it to something else. And there it goes. So yeah, you can create simple primitives in the world this way and place objects. Uh, but of course, the most effective way is to create uh, 3D uh, models in something like Blender. And well, the collaboration over there is kind of difficult. I'm not sure if Blender has introduced any kind of collaborative uh, uh, system. OK. So on that same topic then of um, uh, user-submitted content, uh, are you seeing, um, I guess, community contributions um, being under a specific license or encouraged to be under a specific license like CCNT or or something that um, that supports reuse and and um, and, and, uh, and building out our code is under the Apache 2.2.0 license uh, but we don't really make any rules regarding content it's your stuff you do whatever you want with it uh just have in mind that we don't have any kind of asset protection like mm. everything is just a url to something so anybody can just grab all your stuff if you let them see it so yep no worries <laughs> okay um we've got a couple more questions for you this has been really great uh one from paul schultz um is there a messaging system or email reader or something within vocation yeah oh uh, yeah we have a chat system like Oh, I don't think we can see your screen, but yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, there we are. It's, it's pretty simple, but uh, functional. We've been considering uh, 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 implementing matrix or something similar, like, uh, instead of rolling our own, but this for the time being is kind of uh, uh, will do the job. And there's also uh, a messaging, messaging system of another kind, which is the message mixer, which allows uh, objects to send messages to each other uh, inside an area. So, for instance, uh, different scripts can communicate with each other. Okay, wonderful. Um, <clears throat> just a last quick call out for people. If you have any last questions, please post them now. Uh, and then uh, while we're just giving that a moment, how many users do you have at the moment and how many um, servers are, are in the, the metaverse at the moment? Well, it's kind of a diff difficult question. Um, we have, I think, uh, I've not checked in a while. I think we have more than 300 people in our Discord, but definitely not all of them, them are contributing. Some are just curious about what this is about. Uh, we do have a quite small active community, maybe of the most frequent ones that we see, maybe 30 people or so, I'm not sure. Uh, but yeah, we're definitely looking to get more people in here and uh, have fun and yep. Okay, wonderful. Um, another question from Morgan Lee, uh, does the chat system have encryption? No, not really. It's just a very simple system. So yeah, definitely we've, uh, there's a lot of improvement that can be made in here. For sure. Uh, this is the value of open source is people can get involved and uh, help contribute to that. So that's mm -hmm. wonderful. Um, and I guess the architecture also makes that fairly easy as well because people can make all kinds of um, different uh, functionality at both the back end or the front end. That's quite exciting. Um, is there any last thing you'd like to leave the audience with? Um, you've, you've made a, a good call out for people to get involved. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to leave them with? Mm, well, uh, I kind of forgot. We also have uh, good animations and reactions to sound. So for instance, like, check it out. OK, so let's see. Uh, you can kind of kind of called uh, caught me off guard there. But yeah, I think this is a very promising system that unfortunately uh, died before. Uh, uh, no, no. That yeah, uh, the, I mean the the uh, original commercial project, and I think it, especially with the current situation of the world, it actually has a lot of promise and a uh, bright future if people just come and do something good with it, and I hope people join. All right, then we'll we'll leave it there. Thank you so much for Dim for sharing that with us, um, mm -hmm. and we'll. Um, 
we'll end this session in just a moment. Just for everybody else, there is now a um, 35, no, sorry. How long is the break before the next session? Oh, yeah, sorry, there's only a 15-minute, no, 10-minute break before the next session. <laughs> My deepest apologies, everyone. 10-minute um, break before the next session. Uh, we'll see you all back here in 10 minutes for the last and final talk for today, uh, which is Raphael talking about evolution of suspend to idle support in the Linux kernel. Uh, thank you, Vadim. And if anyone wants to follow up with Vadim, the uh, Blemings um, Labs uh, post-talk Q&A channel on Venulus um, is there to continue the conversation, to continue following up with, uh, with questions. And um, I'll see you all again soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Vidim.